today is going to be another one of those videos where I get to demonstrate to you what a fantastic photography instructor I am. And I'm joined today by Jason, all the way from Nashville? Knoxville. Knoxville, Tennessee. Yes. He's hired me for three whole days, so uh, this is day three, and you've learned lots so far, right? Oh, I've absolutely learned quite a bit. Yeah? Yeah, that's the right, that's the right thing to say. Now, what kind of, uh, what kind of camera system do you shoot with? Pentax. I never heard of Pen what? Pentax. Pen Very popular in Japan. Pentax. So they make like watches or something. Something like that. Right. Yeah. Pentax. Yeah. Never heard of them. But it's a, it's a good camera though, right? Oh yeah, it's top of the line. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're a good photographer, you should be able to get a good shot with any camera, even if it's a, a what? Pentax. Pentax. Yeah. Never heard of them. So what? Uh, what made you book with the photo tripper then? Well, Thomas Heaton was completely booked and he's quite a bit more expensive than you are. Right. Uh, got his book. You bought his book? I did. You got my book though, obviously. You probably bought my book, have you? I, I actually found it at the thrift store. I, I picked it up last week. What? Yeah. Yep. The bootleg? Uh, not a bootleg, just at, at the thrift store. Second hand. How much did you pay for it? Five dollars. U.S. Canadian. Can't even buy a celery stick for that. You got a bargain, didn't you? It was all right. But I think I've got a buyer for it, you know, actually. I'd make about fifteen dollars profit off of it. You know, I'm not above uh, accepting tips. I've got a tip for you. Yeah? Yeah, I think you should switch to Pentax. Who? who? Pentax. Never heard of him. Jason was also the first student I'd had to hire a truck camper. And it was actually quite an impressive rig. So we parked up and then checked out the trail map for what promised to be a relatively easy hike. So where we're off today is the Skyline Trail. Probably the most famous trail in all of Nova Scotia. Very touristy and I don't mind telling people where we're going because it's already rinsed. The car park's probably got 300 cars parked in there right now so I'm not going to keep it a secret. Everybody knows the secret's out. So you're up for a 6.5 kilometre hike? How many miles is that? About 23. Now I've never done this trail before so this is a first so I'm quite excited. And I think the reason why I've not done it before is because every time we've come through, there's not been any clouds. You really need clouds to make this shot work. And we've got quite a lot of juicy clouds today. So I figured it might be a winner. I'm told the trail is kind of boring. It's a bit of a, a tree tunnel like this and doesn't open up until we get to the end. But when it does, we're going to get absolutely tremendous views. Well, you're going to get tremendous shots of the view. Now, you, you, you don't mind if I take pictures as well, do you? You want to take them on my camera? <laughs> no. I don't want to. I don't want to take them on your Timex. Timex. What was it? Timex. Pentax. Pentax. Well, after almost an hour, uh, we're almost at this viewpoint, which is, uh, I, I think, the most famous viewpoint in Nova Scotia. So, in a couple of minutes, we'll see what all the fuss is about. composition, I couldn't resist shooting this quick and cheeky handheld shot. So uh, Jason set up his, his first composition. It's actually quite good, uh, but I was quite alarmed to discover that he wasn't joking about the, the Timex, sorry, Pentax. Pentax. Yeah. Um, what, what, what would you call this? What, what, what camera is this? 
Uh, this is the Pentax K70 APS-C. Yeah. Uh, 26 megapixel. 26, eh? 26. How many stops to dynamic range? Two. <laughs> <laughs> so you basically, it's fair to say that you're into antiques then. You like old, obsolete things. Well, I'm here taking your class, aren't I? Point taken. So let's have a look at this composition that you found up. It's quite quite nice. I might actually copy that, which is part of the waiver that you signed. You know, you did agree that if you find a really good comp, I, I can just flat out steal it. That was in the waiver? Yeah, you signed the waiver, right? I used it for toilet paper earlier. Do you have another copy? I've got a digital. We'll just we'll just you just got a ticker box on my on my phone and I'm covered if I even drop your camera, <laughs> which uh, is very unlikely. So can you talk me through this, uh, this prehistoric device and, and the composition that you've, you've got well, laid out? You can see it on the display here. Yeah. I don't know how well you can see it, but we've got the mountains with the fir trees in the back. Some leading lines leading you through the frame with the road down below. Yeah, so you know all the posh terminology then, eh? leading lines and all that, yeah. Yes. And I think the goal here is, so you can probably just see on this camera, you might be able to see there's, there's a boardwalk there and a deck. Well, we don't want that. So that's why Jason's got low like this, which I'm hoping you can see now. I can't really tell because this screen is so small, but I, th I believe that you can't see it now. So that's it's a process of hiding things that we don't like. Landscape photography is a bit of a waiting game, but we didn't have to play the game for long. All right, I reckon the sun is about maybe 15 minutes from setting. You just see it over there. I've never seen this ocean this calm before. You can actually see the clouds reflected on the ocean. It is absolutely magic. I reckon when the sun pops out from underneath that cloud there, I think this is going to erupt. I hope it's going to erupt. But anyway, let me show you the back of the camera and I'll explain this composition. So I'll just brighten this up a little bit. It's a lot of foreground. Now, normally I wouldn't have that much foreground in a shot, but it's just really interesting. I love all of these pointy angles and textures and colors. And then obviously in the background, if I brighten this up, you can see the mountains with that very famous highway there that carves through this valley. And then if I just darken it down a bit, look at that beautiful color in the sky. So I've tried to sort of balance. If you look at how much real estate I've devoted to the sky, it's almost equal to what I've done with the foreground there. But it doesn't look that interesting at the moment because that's, there's no light hitting it. But when that light starts to hit all of these rocks, I'm hoping that they get beautiful red side light as well as the hills and then the, the clouds just erupting. That would be absolutely tresmophique. Now I'll tell you what, in spite of uh, you using a Hasbro camera, uh, you've quickly worked your way into like the top echelon of my students because you've brought something that is vital to our happiness right now. Can you just show us what you've, what you've got there? It's my trusty thermosil. Absolutely essential. You're the first person that's ever brought one of those. I'm impressed. I think it's a necessity of here. It, oh, it is. It's vital. Do you want to borrow it? <clears throat> well, if it works properly, I should be within your, your cone of safety. Do you like the flavor of it? Do you, do you, like, do you chew little, it? It's a little tart. Yeah. For my life. You're a little but... tart. <laughs> <laughs> After 10 more minutes of shenanigans and banter, the light began to work its magic and it was time to shoot. So there you go, the sun's last glimmer. It's, it's going right down right now. Beautiful color, beautiful light over there, but not, as always, not, not over there where we want it. So we didn't quite get the light that we wanted, but I got an okay shot, but it's definitely piqued my interest. I've got to come back here 
uh, perhaps in the autumn when all of this or most of this is just flaming colors absolutely gorgeous i think if you came here on a stormy day and you got some nice storm light you, you could get an epic shot so now that i know it's got that much potential i'm definitely going to be back i'll tell you that it's getting dark yeah you think we'll make it before full dark no no i think we're six hours out no 45 minutes well it ended up taking about an hour in the dark before we got back to the comfort of the camper and then we just had to find somewhere to park up for the night so that we'd be ready for the next day's shoot coffee time what a place to wake up let me show you this this is what i love about having a camper you can just wake up in the most spectacular locations and you don't have far to go for your first shoot which i think actually is complete nonsense because today we're leaving the park and uh, we're going down to uh, a little private spot that I know might have an absolutely gorgeous reflexion. But for now, it's coffee time. After coffee, we took our camper convoy and headed south to my secret spot. Jason and I are at a local haunt that I absolutely love. This is not a spot where you're likely to bump into another photographer. And uh, Jason set up his uh, Fisher Price camera, and oh, sorry, yeah, um, Tonka camera. Hopefully, we can get a mediocre shot with what this thing can do. Uh, but if not, then I'll, I'll maybe lend you my camera, and then you can get a proper shot um, instead of struggling with limitations. There. So let's have a look at your composition then, and see see what you've what you've learned over the last couple of days all right well straight away actually i, I kind of have to eat my words about this mattel camera because i kind of like this 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 flippy screen can't do that on any of my cameras i mean that's that's some old tech that i feel like all cameras should have so it's definitely a, a thumbs up for this fisher price sorry what was it pentax Pe pentaximus uh camera Pentaximus Maximus, I would say. Pentaximus Prime. Pentaximus Prime. Yeah, I've got to say, I'm eating my words now about this this camera. It's it's not too terrible, but we'll see what kind of images it can produce. Obviously, you've learned from the master here, uh, and uh, you know you've got a pretty good starting point. But what I would do is, for me, this shot is all about this reflexion, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd be tempted to angle this down a little bit, move over onto that rock that you can see in the river and it'll just it'll fill the frame a little bit more with this lovely reflexion here and a bit less of this complicated canopy that you can see here just simplify things okay what do you think to that does that sound like good advice i mean i'm not sure that's how adam gibbs would do it but i'll give it a try <laughs> i definitely wouldn't do it like that but thomas heaton would be really the guy that you know we'd take the advice from shouldn't we is that camera waterproof jason pentax is weather resistant so yeah but not river resistant though is it right let's uh, adjust this composition now honestly i'm being serious now i'm not taking a piss but this pentaximus maximus all cameras should be able to do that are you watching this sony that is brilliant because so he stood on this rock if he doesn't want to get his feet wet and stand right you know that's four feet deep there if he doesn't want to get four feet in the creek that screen allows you to compose your shot in such a way that you can be at 45 degrees to your camera and still get the shot that is brilliant i, I want to see that on all my cameras from now on just not with the terrible resolution of that 25 year old antique sometimes older is better how old are you? 48. Correct, I'm 50. Right, let's get this shot. <laughs> just love lesser known locations like this one so if you're a regular viewer of the channel you might remember this location from previous videos i've actually been here a couple of times and my first time was in the autumn where i got this shot mm -hmm. 
and my second time was in the winter where I pretty much did the same shot but with completely different conditions. But I've always been curious to get a shot of this when it's bright green, you know, like late spring, early summer. And, and today is the day to do it. It's absolutely glowing hot with beautiful green light and reflexions. And that's something that I'd, I'd recommend that you try for your own portfolio is to keep going to the same spot. If you know, if it's worthy of it and just reshoot the same composition or a similar composition in completely different conditions just to show the seasons and then you can kind of pick which season you like best they're always slightly different but oh look at that now it's the water's just gone completely flat and calm absolutely tremendous so anyway i've moved further back down the creek here so that now we can shoot with a longer focal length and perhaps deal with that canopy in the background a little bit better just by excluding it so uh, I'm going to make some space here for Jason to, to bring his Tonka toy and then uh, hopefully he can get the shot. When there's no immediate foreground in your composition, it pays to move further away from your subject and choose a longer focal length. So we've moved further back down the creek, as I mentioned, and uh, Jason's got his first shot at what's the focal length there? Uh, 70. 70. Mm -hmm. Is that not exactly what I predicted? It is. And uh, I just want to point out that if this shot turns out to be quite brilliant, which I think it does, part of the waiver that you signed says that I can absolutely come and copy your shot immediately after. I hope you're all right with that. Is that in the fine print? Oh, the entire agreement is fine print. Anyway, if this shot's any good, here's Jason's shot. fully articulating screen uh, and I'll be honest with you I was a little bit jealous so what do you think Jason oh it's absolutely fantastic the light and everything yeah. shining through I think what I love about it is you just get the whole this is probably a really good time to remind you about the waiver that you signed Jason Waver hell, what's your refund policy? Oh, there's no refunds. <laughs> right, I'm just going to grab my camera and I'll just use your tripod to get your shot. I'm back in a bit. Well, if I'm being honest, I think I actually prefer Jason's shot. Perhaps that Tampax, sorry, Pentax camera is not so bad after all. Gavin, this is unacceptable. Well, I, I, I admit it's not ideal, but that is why on these workshops, I always include a free three kilogram bag of basmati rice. You're welcome. Maybe a six kilogram bag. <laughs> I actually felt bad, so I did Jason a special favour. Right, Jason, let's uh, let's get your book signed, shall we? Eh? Brilliant book, isn't it? To Jason. Sorry for drowning your camera, <laughs> Gavin. Enjoy your book there. No refunds though. How much did you pay for it? Five dollars US. <laughs> I've got a tip for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 that was that was liquid, I'm not gonna lie. I need to get a lens wipe. <laughs> you do. <laughs> Just do a deadpan. <laughs> do you mind if I uh, just set my camera and get this shot? I'll just go straight on your tripod there. Cheers.
Oh yeah, that's fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this is not acceptable. Wow. Well, I've thought about that. <laughs> Gavin, this isn't acceptable. Well, I've thought about that. <laughs> Gavin, this is not acceptable. Well, I've thought about that, and uh, this workshop does actually include a three kilogram. <laughs> <laughs> See, I thought about that. And that is why this photography workshop actually includes a three kilogram bag of basmati rice. <laughs> so what do you think, Jason? Oh, it's absolutely fantastic. The light and everything yeah. shining through. I think what I love about it is you just get the whole... Let's get your book signed, eh? Brilliant book, isn't it?